Greetings, and welcome to Mediocre Minis. Basing your miniatures can be a very fun thing to do, because then you can actually put your miniatures in a setting of your choice. For instance, you can use simple rocks for a mountainous or relatively outside terrain. You can use sticks for a forest or even a tavern. You can also use grass, tufts, and flocking to create a field. And of course, you can use sand for, well, beach. Now, I'm not going to lie, I in the past used some very simple ideas and concepts for my basing. In general, it was just some rocks and some tufts. Nothing too fancy, nothing too exciting, and it was pretty basic, and I didn't really have a need or desire, at least at the time, to do anything creative with any of my basing. For instance, my Tau army is pretty straightforward with this. It's not my first army, but currently, right now, this is what I have the most miniatures painted for. I would simply use some PVA glue and rocks to create what is just a basic rocky terrain and a few grass tufts to, you know, set it off a little bit and show that it's not a completely barren area. I currently only have one Tau Mini that's actually different, and that is my Tau Commander. I painted this one up for a competition at my local game store, so I put in a lot of of extra effort for it. For this one specifically, I did use some texture paste and gave some extra rocks and tufts for some additional effects because this was for a competition and for the most part the centerpiece of my army and I wanted to look nice. I should mention I also took first place in the single model category. However, for my Drukhari army, I wanted to do something different. Now, I originally started off with rocks and that's perfectly fine, but a little bit ago, I decided to repaint the army completely to go for a much brighter and bolder scheme. After some thought, and since I'm already repainting the miniatures themselves, I really wanted to do something different. Specifically, I wanted to have a crackle type base with yellow underneath and black on top. Now, I did have a problem when I was coming about to try to create this effect. Now, yes, there are miniature paints that already exist that do include a crackle type effect. For instance, Games Workshop makes several of these paints that actually can make a crackle effect, which is originally what I was going for. More specifically, Mordrin Earth by Games Workshop would have been exactly right up my alley using a yellow undercoat in this over top of it. However, there are a few problems that I encounter with it. First issue is you would need a decent amount of this type of paint for the effect to really take shape. So you would need numerous different pots. Since I was planning on doing my entire army this way, it wouldn't be simple as getting one pot of this paint or this technical paint or texture paint and using it on the bases. I would need a lot more of it as you do need to apply a little bit thicker of a coat for it to actually take effect. Second, this stuff is expensive. It's around $8 a pot and I really didn't want to spend that much money with that much paint to do an entire army. So I decided I really needed to come up with a different solution. Now after a quick search around, I came across this. Acrylic Crackle Medium by Folk Art. I was even able to pick up this bottle from my local craft store. However, you could probably easily find this online as well or any other craft stores that you have in your area. Now, naturally, uh, my first instinct was to go home and immediately try this on my models, but I decided to take a slightly different approach and do some test bases and some tests on different materials just to make sure I got the effect that I wanted quickly and not actually screw up any of my models in the process. So it kind of makes sense to do some testing first. So to start this test, I took 10 different blank bases of various sizes. Once I got all the bases, I primed them white. To expand this test some, I used six different colors of the rainbow and even did a little bit of mixing of colors together on the same base to see how they would work out in the end. Now before we get into the crackle medium itself, a quick note about the yellow that I used. Yellow is a notorious color for having pretty poor coverage. So in order to get around that, I decided not to use paint at all. I actually used acrylic artist ink. Now, in the future, for all of these bases and other yellows on other projects, I use this Artist Loft Yellow. And this stuff is my jam. This worked so exceptionally well. It gave relatively nice co coverage very quickly. It didn't require too many coats. 
and it actually had the opacity that I was looking for. I didn't want to spend all day doing multiple coats of ink or paint over top of something, and this worked out exceptionally well, and I did get this at my local Michaels craft store. Now, with your paint dry and you prepare to add this medium, there is one very important thing that you should keep in mind. You do not want to paint this medium directly on the surface as you would with a normal paint or other mixture. What you actually need to do is um, you need to dab it on. Did somebody say dab? Yes, you want to dab it on. I decided to use a brush that was well past its prime and dab the medium across the entire base. Full coverage is actually very important as with any type of application. If you don't cover the full area you wish to crackle, it's not going to crackle in areas you don't actually apply the medium to. So full coverage is important. Also, you're looking for about a one to two millimeter thick layer. If you go too thin, the crackling won't actually take place. And if you go too thick, it will never really dry or give good results. So a nice solid one to two millimeter thick layer is all you really need. Now, after you apply the medium, be sure do not touch it. Let it sit there and let it dry. If you touch the medium in any way as it's drying, it can screw up the crackle effect process later on. Okay, so I don't actually understand the science or how this actually works, but I did find with my experiments that if you touch it in any way before it's completely dried, it can screw things up later on. So once you apply it, let it sit. Now, depending on your environment that you have, it can vary on how long this medium takes to dry. For me, it took about one to two hours, but if you have a warmer or colder, more or less humid environment, it can actually vary a little bit more on the drying time. I have found that you can leave it a little bit longer than that to make sure it's fully dry, but just keep in mind it's not very quick and it does take a few hours to fully dry off. A quick way to tell if the medium is dried or not is to simply rotate the base around in a bright light. If the surface looks shiny or slightly shiny, as if it has a coat of gloss varnish, you're good to go. If it looks like there are puddles or small pools of liquid that are smooth, then you probably should wait a little bit longer. The point is you are going for a shiny look and not a wet look. Once you have the desired look that you're looking for, you can move on to top coating your bases. Now, just like with the crackle medium, it is very important your application of the, your paint on top of the dried medium, which means you actually need to, once again, dab it on. Did somebody say dab? Yes, you need to dab it. Brushing the paint on top will actually spoil the effect. So dabbing works substantially easier for this effect to work. Second, you don't want to thin your paints very much to get this effect to take place. A small amount of water is fine, but you are going for a little bit thicker than a base coat, but not directly out of the bottle. So it's still a relatively thick paint that you're using, and you simply just dab it all across the surface. Now, with the, the dabbing process taking place, it actually starts to show the effect really quickly. You don't need nearly as much paint as you did the medium, but it will dry relatively quickly and you can see the crackle effect right before your eyes. Also, you should only really use one coat. Once you apply the paint, it will begin to dry relatively quickly. So once it starts to dry, let it go and let the magic happen. If you go back over a surface once it's dried, it will just fill in the cracks and you won't really see any of the crackle effect. It's really important to just dab it and move on and accept whatever results you have, especially once it starts to dry. Wet paint, you can go a little, a little bit more, but try to only make one pass over every area that you have before uh, letting it dry or going back over it. Now, as I did when I painted up the bases, I used a variety of colors on the bottom that would show through the black surface just to see how this would work and how this would look, depending on what I felt like doing or what I potentially want to do in the future. I found out pretty quickly that a darker, lighter color mix gives the best effect as it's easier to see. 
while a, say, a dark purple or a dark blue underneath black works, it doesn't necessarily show up as well as, say, orange, yellow, or red does underneath black. I did notice that if you use a lighter base coat and a darker top coat, or vice versa, it seems to work a lot better, as it's much more eye-popping and a lot easier to see. Now, when I did this for my Drakari minis, it was relatively easy because I wanted, again, yellow underneath black, and that color seemed to stand out very nicely. Since I already had most of my miniatures painted when I started this crackling process, I just simply had to be very careful to make sure that I wasn't covering up any of the miniature that I already painted. I did notice that if some of the crackle medium gets on top of the mini, it wasn't too big of a deal as it dried relatively clear. However, it's definitely worth still being careful. Though I didn't notice too many problems if the medium is a little bit on top of different parts of your model. It's the top coat and the black that I really need to worry about. Now there are a few things that I should mention about the crackle medium, especially once it dries and you apply your top coat. It can be a little bit fragile. It can easily kind of rub off or chip away if you were to poke and prod it too much, even after the paint is dried. Again, I'm not quite sure the science behind this. If you do apply this crackle medium and the paint over top of it, you can get an effect, but it can be rubbed off relatively easily. The way I got around this is simply applying a varnish over top of it. I generally use a matte varnish on all my miniatures once they are completed anyways to help protect the paint jobs. So I would definitely put some form of varnish on this to help protect the crackle effect. As again, it can rub off relatively easily. Second thing I noticed is that the crackle effect wasn't quite the same as other types of pre-made products out there. The Games Workshop uh, Crackle Paints do give a lot larger and a little bit more variance than what you would normally think of as a crackled surface or a crack surface. I had to kind of accept something different with a lot more cracks that are relatively smaller. I didn't get too many wide, larger ones uh, that easily unless I were to go in there and chip away some of the paint myself. I don't have too much of a problem with this. While I personally kind of would have preferred fewer larger cracks as opposed to many smaller ones, I still think it works out in the end. And it is still kind of cool, even though it wasn't exactly what I was going for at the beginning. But I still ended up kind of liking it. So the question is, what do you all think about this? Is this something that you might want to try? Is it something that could be suitable for your armies or even something that you might consider doing in the future? I know it's not exactly like some of the other products you might find, but I do actually kind of like it and it can save you a lot of money, especially since you're not designated to using black, grays, or browns, or even a little bit of red for this type of project. You can basically do any color combination that you want. So I'm curious what you think. Are there other products out there that you have used? Is this something that you would like to try? Or is there some other item out there that you use to give a nice crackle effect with relatively low cost or ease of use. Please leave a comment down below. I am very curious as to what you tried or what you might think or what else might be out there. Once again, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you got something out of this and maybe we can start a conversation about things to do in the future. Thanks again and this has been Mediocre Minis and I shall return. <laughs>